modders of Morrowind. So you want to play Morrowind today, but also want to have it modded up so it looks kind of amazing. And you could play the vanilla version of Morrowind, but you've seen all of those fantastic videos like my own of Morrowind in 2021, and it just looks fantastic. However, doing those sort of modding escapades can take a number of days to even a number of weeks. Some people spend years modding Bethesda games and you kind of want to play the game today, <laughs> right? You don't want to spend the next three days modding and then enjoy the game. You want to enjoy it today. So today what we're doing is a sort of stripped down, simple, very easy to do modding guide. And I'm going to take you through everything without any cuts or edits or anything like that to show you exactly what you have to do. And this is by no means the best way to mod. It's not even, many modders would say this is not the proper way to mod because I'm not using any mod organizers or anything like that because that stuff takes time to get used to, takes time to, to install and all of that. So I, I wanna keep it as simple as possible. And maybe this can act as a base for then if you want to continue modding later, you can. Otherwise you can just get into the game and this should take no more than 30 minutes, really. But if you're just taking your time, maybe up to an hour, really. But but not that long. Not that long, I promise. So, uh, first things first, you need to go ahead and get Morrowind. So, uh, let me go ahead and show you here. This is GOG.com. So, if you uh, there's a lot of ways to get Morrowind. You could have an old CD. Uh, but keep in mind, if you have an old CD, you've got to have the expansions as well. Blood Moon and Tribunal. Uh, if, so, you could use an old CD or you could get it off of Steam. Or you could get it off of GOG.com. Now, this stuff should basically work with Steam. Uh, it, it does work with Steam. But it's easiest if you get it on GOG. Because on GOG, you can download the installer by itself. And just as a little note modding Morrowind generally it's recommended to not have the game in program files so if you're using Steam you might have your Steam install directory already inside program files and it can be a little tricky trying to have games in different locations on your computer so if you go to GOG.com or if you already own the GOG.com uh, GOG version of the game then this is the more uh, easiest way because see when you go to uh, Morrow in here and then you can open up downloads and you can download and install now with Galaxy That's their installer thing, but down here. It's download offline Backup game installers. This is just an installer file It's an exe and that's what we want and that's what I have So I have this more in mods folder just showing all the things that we need to download today. This is it This is everything. That's all we're doing here is the Morrowind install and I've uninstalled Morrowind, so I gotta reinstall it. So follow me along with this installing <laughs> uh, and set up Elder Scrolls. I have I've totally read the EULA, and we're gonna install it into C Morrowind. If you click options, you can pick where you want it to go. C Morrowind is where I'm putting it. As long as it's outside of the program files, that's the best. Now, again, this th what we're doing today should work with a Steam install inside of program files, but sometimes there's like some antivirus issues, Windows defenders sometimes blocks files. It, it can it can cause some issues. So if you're not entirely sure what's going wrong, it could be an issue with files, file management in program files. So it's safest to put it in C Morrowind. And let's install Morrowind. Ah, uh, uh, installing Morrowind, it's always a great feeling. <laughs> and uh you know, what we're doing today, it's it's gonna be surprisingly good because mods have come a long way since the last time I made a guide like this. Last time we did the Morrowind Overhaul 3.0 and that every modder, people who create mods, uh, every mod creator will say the overhaul is outdated, it's incompatible, it's got problems, but it's still been sort of the easiest way for newcomers to just mod the game and start playing, right? So it's not the best way to do that but the overhaul has been the easiest way for a long time and I, I want to see if I can make a mod list that will get something very similar but more prepared for future modding because the last time overhaul was updated was what 2012 or something it, it's getting to be about 10 years old and mods have come a long long way 
Okay, we skipped to the end of the install process, and The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind Game of the Year was installed successfully. Fantastic. Now, uh, just as a good practice for modding, it's always a good idea to just constantly launch the game at every step of modding. So let's go ahead and launch the game here. And we're just going to press play to load into the game to make sure it's actually working. All right? Make sure it's actually working. We can skip that. You know, everything seems okay. Good. Yep, here's the startup. This is vanilla Morrowind. Right? No biggie, no biggie. And then we're just going to exit again. Nothing's nothing's broken, nothing's crashed. And also sometimes with programs, just launching the game one time helps your PC understand. Oh, okay, this, this is all working correctly. Okay, now we can get to modding. So, mods, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mod downloads here. Eight mod downloads. Not a lot, not a lot. Right? When, when you mod these games, it can be hundreds, but we're doing eight. Now, when you download things, they're going to be archived files like this. So, for example, you open up a file and it's got more files inside of it. Uh, this is it's, it's like a package. It's a box, you know, they're like zip files or you know, they're packages, right? Like a Tupperware containing many different things, right? So it's a file of files. Now, to open these, usually you would already have a default software on it. You can right click on the file and you'll probably see 7-zip or uh, some extract files. Uh, if you don't have a way to extract files, I recommend just getting 7-zip. You go to 7-zip.org and you can download the windows or uh, the, the versions here. So you can just download those and then install 7-zip and then you can go ahead and get things running. And now let me bring you through the whole thing, right? So we installed Morrowind into just C drive. C drive, Morrowind, this is the install folder where we installed, we chose to install the folder here, and we, we're going to be copying folders into here. So let me go ahead and go over to my Morrowind mods folder and bring you through the process. So the first thing we want to do is get the Morrowind code patch. By the way, links will be in the description to all of these things. Morrowind code patch. Now, you can, of course, read all of this, but we're doing an easy guide. Easy guide. We're not customizing too much. You can if you want to do more, but we're doing basics. Click on Files right here, and then you can see the top one, Main Files. There is the Mod Manager download, so the appropriate way of modding is using a Mod Manager, so it's easy to install and uninstall. But we're doing absolute basics. You want to click on Manual Download and Unless you have a premium account on Nexus, just click on slow download and that will begin downloading the file, right? So that's just showing you how to download these things. I've already downloaded all of these, so that's the process for downloading th these things. So more in the code patch. Let's open that and we have some files there. So for this one, let's go to the more in folder and just select all of these things and drag it in. Now, obviously, you don't need every single file, but we're keeping it simple. Selecting all the files, putting it in. And then we have this Morrowind code patch file right here. And we're going to double click that and run it. This, this is a patcher for the game that just sort of fixes all sorts of things. Now, there's a ton of options here. All of these game mechanics, all of these visual options, mod specific stuff if you have other sort of mods that need things, interface changes, international options, various bug fixes. So you can go through each one and see what they do. However, the default's fine. Just click apply chosen patches and it does all the things you need, right? It applies a four gigabyte patch so the game runs faster and it just does everything. Good. And we can close that. Mod one done. If you've never modded Morrowind before, congratulations. You have now modded Morrowind. Let's close these tabs as we go along. So we've finished the code patch. Next, we're, the reason why we can have so few mods is because a, a couple of these mods are big ones. They do all sorts of things. Morrowind Rebirth is a project that overhauls the game. It adds in more stuff. It adds in more buildings. It uh, does some fixes. It reforms the world. It, it just does a ton of stuff. Now, if you want an absolute vanilla experience of Morrowind, you can skip this. However, I've played with this and it, it does a lot of good stuff. Like it 
rearranges trees and, and all sorts of stuff, right? So I would highly recommend using Mar and Rebirth. It's pretty advanced now, version 5.4 at the time of making this video. If you're watching this in the future, it'll be higher. Uh, however, a note, we are using a grass mod specifically for Rebirth. So the version of Rebirth you get, if you want lots of grass in this game, if you want grass, the most recent version of the grass limits the most recent version of Rebirth. So for example, if Rebirth is at version 5.5, then the grass is only at 5.4, then the grass is going to glitch out with Rebirth 5.5. So last time I did this, the most recent version of Rebirth was 5.3, I think, and the most recent version of the grass was 5.2, so I had to get an older version of Rebirth. You can find that on their website. Uh, but for now, Currently, we're version 5.4, so we download the files. And again, if I go to my mods folder, we have Mar and Rebirth. So I open that up and there's a few things in here, right? Note, whenever there's a data files folder, that means you want to put it where you see data files, right? Sometimes mods just show what's supposed to be inside like that. But here we go, compatibility patches, data files, documents. We don't, again, we don't need everything, but just select it all and drag it into your Morrowind folder. Don't accidentally put it into a folder, just put it into like next to one of these files and it's gonna copy over the files from our uh, package into the install directory. Oh, a little bit of a glitch there, no problem. Uh, let me just make sure that worked. Let's drag data files in. Let's let's do it one at a time when something happens like that. Sometimes things just go wrong. Let's copy the data files over. Okay. If that keeps happening, go into data files and copy over all of this into data files. And there we go. That's working. I think it was saying Morrowind.ini was not there. So after this, we're going to fix that. So basically, when you launch the game earlier, maybe start the game up as well. <laughs> so there we go. It's copying over the data files. So what I did was I went into the data files, grabbed those exact files and putting it into the install Morrowind slash data files area here. And we want to replace all the files in this destination. Okay, replace all the files. And it, it can take a while. It can take a while. Because this is this is 5,134 files. This is an overhaul. And let me just scroll down and check here. No, it's fine. We should be able to continue like this. So sometimes unexpected glitches happen in modding. You just have to adapt. So essentially, to simplify it on what to be safe here, on the Morrowind Rebirth, extract file so in our downloads Marin mods downloads here in the rebirth go open up the data files and then copy these into your morrowind uh, c slash morrowind data files and then we're taking this stuff and putting it into the data files folder because uh, that's the stuff we actually need right so rebirth is now installed so now we've installed code patch and rebirth so we just want to run the Morrowind launcher. Don't run Morrowind or Morrowind.original. Sometimes things can go wrong. Run the Morrowind launcher just to make sure things do work. But also this time we've installed something. Let's open up data files and then we can scroll down and you can see all these Morrowind rebirth ones. Just double click to put an X next to all the Morrowind rebirth. You, you can ignore the rest for now. We're just doing this stuff here. More and rebirth. Press OK. And then we're going to press play. And then make sure the game runs. Make sure the game runs. Right? Let's actually press new. And make sure we can actually get into the game. The cinematic plays. We can see Jew. Stand up. There you go. You were dreaming. What's your name? Okay, so everything seems to be working. The game's rather dark because I've dropped the gamma, but there we go. There's the game. There's the game. Right. Well, game's working. Last night's storm could wake. Let's exit. I heard them. 
So you could test it further, actually get into the game and all of that. But seems like nothing's broken. Good, let us continue. We're going to go back to our mods folder. Rebirth, now done. We've copied those files over. Let's close the tab. Next, we have Morrowind Enhanced Textures. This is a texture pack which used some AI technology to upscale all the textures, right? Using machine learning, 100% vanilla friendly. So it gives you the same vibe as the original game, but all the textures are just more HD. They're just better, right? So we're going to get this. If you go to Files, you can scroll down and see Met current version is 4.1. It might be higher. And you just do manual download and you're going to get the uh, Met file here. And if we open that, we can see it's just got a textures folder in there. So when we go to our Morrowind install folder, C slash Morrowind, you open up data files and that's where the textures go. So sometimes mods come with a data files folder and then the thing inside. Sometimes it just comes with the thing inside. So you got to be careful not to put like the data files folder in the data files folder. It can be confusing, but just be careful of that. So you see textures here, you see textures here. We're going to grab this textures folder from our pack and drag it. Don't drag it into one of these folders. Drag it down to just over this the file area. Drag it over and it's going to start processing. Now, this is just a texture pack. Not too much can go wrong with this. Uh, just make sure you overwrite any files, right? This is another 4,491 files. So we've already modded at this point Morrowind with about 10,000 files. Isn't that amazing? Now, of course, replace all the files in the destination. Replace all the files. We're putting new textures on. We want to replace the old ones. There we go. And now the texture pack is installed. We can close this package. We can close the website. Okay, now we're going to do grass. Grass is a little bit more complicated, but similar things. We want to get the Aesthesia ground cover grass mod. Again, go to files and just do a manual download of this first main file. And we're going to end up with this one. And you can see, look at the folders. There's textures and meshes, which means it goes in the data files folder. Data files, see meshes, textures. So grab these folders and put them into the data files folder where you installed Morrowind. Nothing to replace. Great. The grass is now in. Uh, so that's all we need to do for that. We can close this. And now we get to the grass for Morrowind Rebirth 5.4. We go to files. Do the manual download. And then we're going to get this uh, file here, uh, gra the, the, the Grass Rebirth. And here it's data files, right? There's stuff inside there. So when you see data files, you want to go to where there's data files and then pop that in. So that puts in these two, these two files right here, right? We can close that. We can close that. So grass, not done yet, but the files we need are there, right? So now I actually kind of sort of stopped modding at this point. Well, well, I skipped these next two rather. I didn't stop modding. Uh, there's one more step at the end here. Uh, I sort of stopped here because I was okay with the vanilla bodies and stuff, but uh, we can do this. Robert's bodies and facelift to update the body textures and, and models and also the heads and the hair. I'm, I'm okay with vanilla, but we can do this anyway, because sometimes you associate the original characters with certain looks and you don't want to change it, but we'll do this. Robert's bodies, again, files. Just do the manual download. There's no option here. Fixed main meshes. And then we go to our mods. We have our Robert's bodies. See, there's a data files folder. So we're going to go to Morrowind where there's a data files folder and drag that in. Let it process. Good. Robert's body's files are in. And then we're going to do facelift. Again, same thing, files, manual download of this, uh, the, this, uh, yeah, the meshes and the textures. We're going to need this, meshes and textures. Manual download of the meshes, manual download of the textures. This is two different files. Do note here, 
two separate downloads for this one mod, right? We need these two, right? So when we go to our mods folder, you can see we have facelift meshes and textures. So let's do the meshes and you see meshes. We go to Morrand, which means it's in the data files folder and drag the meshes where there's a meshes folder, but just over to the files here. Okay. Let it replace the files. Okay, and now let's do the textures. Let's go back to our mods folder. The facelift textures. So Morrowind, data files, there's textures. Let's drag that over. Good, replace the files. And then we're done with facelift. And that's the main file sort of modding stuff, right? We don't need to run the game right now because things can be a little bit odd before we, we actually do this next step. This next one is sort of a program that just reprograms Morrowind. I don't, I don't know how to explain it in layman terms, but basically that's it. It's a program that affects the program. And if you go down here to the files, this is M-G-E-X-E, -E, Morrowind Graphics Extender is what it's called. And you can get the exec executable installer right? Uh, and that can do it. Or a manual install. Both should work, but I got the manual install just to keep it in the same veins of what we've been doing. And this has a bunch of stuff. So I did the manual install, manual download to get this file here, right? This package. So you can see it's got a data files folder. So let's go to C, Morrowind, where we see a data files folder. And we're going to copy all these files over. Let's copy all of these over and replace. Usually when you're modding, you replace the files in whatever you're doing because whatever you install later replaces the old one. So it's only an issue if there's two mods that overlap things and then you want to maybe want to keep the old stuff that gets complicated. But for now, just replace all the files. There we go. And we've installed the more. Well, we've installed more graphics since then. Well, we've put the files there anyway. So now we have everything we need in the Morrowind folder, right? Right? Pretty quick, pretty quick. It's only been like 25 minutes plus install time. Uh, so, oh, 20, yeah, 20. So now you want to run M-G-E-X-E-G-U-I. This is the program that does a whole bunch of stuff, right? So here, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of things you could do. You, you could, instead of using anti-aliasing here, you could use your NVIDIA graphics card, all sorts of stuff. But for now, for now, let's just do the easy thing and pick the highest option that supports here. So like if I try to put 16, it says your selected anti-aliasing level is not supported by your graphics card. That's fine. What about times eight? Great. And it's traffic filtering. Just try push things up. Th this depends on your system. Like you could leave it as default, but if you have a good system, you can probably run this. VSync, do not put X2, X3, X4. You could put on, but don't put higher than that. You want to enable shaders. This is important. Enable shaders and then click shader setup. Here, there's now quality presets. Again, it depends on how powerful your PC is, but you can always come back and change it to be lower later. So just try the highest. Let's put very high and press save. That's all. Use the preset. It's fine. One important thing you might want to change here is FOV. There's an auto FOV right here, right? Which sort of sets the field of view in game for you. Now, typically you'd want to leave it alone, but if you wanted to change it, you can uncheck that and type in the field of view you want. Like maybe you want 85 instead, right? Maybe you want 85 instead, that's fine. Or you could just auto FOV and it detects your screen and everything. But just to show, I'm gonna put 85. Sometimes you just want it a little narrow. It depends like if maybe how far away you are from the screen, you can change that right here, right? Good. Now you want to go to the distant land tab, right? I'll minimize that to keep things clean here. Distant land. We want to have distant land set up. Now, this is a th process that makes things in the game that are far away appear, 
right? It sort of creates stuff, but it's all based on the mods you have installed, right? So let's click on the distant land generator. And you have to pick the mods you want included in this generator. So start by clicking current load order and then have a look through if we've left anything out. Uh, so for example, we are using Robert's bodies, right? Uh, are we using anything else? I think that's the only thing that we've installed that we need to turn on at this point. Robert's bodies, which I don't even think you need to turn on. It's just humans, but I'm just matching this to the, the files that we're using. We installed Robert's bodies. Now, here is where you want to turn on grass rebirth and grass rebirth, right? This is an important note because we're turning this on here, but we're turning it off somewhere else. Grass is a bit weird because you want it to appear in the distance and nearby. So distant land, we turn on grass rebirth right here. Make a note of that. Grass rebirth is on in distant land setup, right? So that looks good. And then let's continue. Now here again, this is VRAM usage for your land textures. I've got a good graphics card, so I'm going to put it up to max. And it shows the VRAM usage. This is not a huge amount, but if you're on like a 2, 2 GB video card, then this might be rather high. But if you're on like a 16 GB video card, you should be fine. Even 8 GB, it should be fine, right? Again, you can always come back and redo it for lower settings. So try the highest and see if it works. And then we want to create land textures. Good. These processes can take a while. Now, mesh details, I'm going to put it to ultra high. I have a good setup, so I'm putting it to max. And then we've got to wait for this to finish processing. It can take a while. Okay, the landscape textures are created. So now land meshes, ultra high, create land meshes. And see, that's processing. So we can look at the other options here. Grass density, you can choose how much grass you have. Generally, I like to put 80%. Uh, but recommended settings tend to be like between 30 to 80. So if you think it's too much grass, you can adjust that. But I'm just going to put 80 there. Mesh detail level, I'm putting full. Distant texture reduction. Technically, you could put none, but it says it could really impact performance. So we're going to leave that as... Default, default, default. Include reflective waters and in interiors, increases load time. I've got a fast PC, so I'm turning that on. Generally, you could leave this all as default, right? You, you, but you can tweak it if you want. So I'm just gonna lower grass density, get grass density to 80% and turn on reflective waters and in interiors. And then we can create statics. Now, this usually takes the longest. It could take a while. So let's just wait until this bar fills up. Whew, that took a while. I uh, hope you got yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee or something, a snack while waiting. Uh, but it's done. It's done. We just waited for that bar to finish. And now we're finished. You can click on finish. And now all of these options turn on. And there's a few things you can change. So for example, the often recommended draw distance is six cells. Uh, though actually in terms of the mystery of the Mor Morrowind, Sometimes I prefer five, right? The, the higher this is, the worse the game will run. So if things are lagging, you can try to drop this to four, right? I wouldn't really go lower than four. It gets very, very closed in beyond that. But uh, five is a nice default. Six, if you want to see a bit further. Technically, you could go up to like 12, but your game will probably start lagging. But you, you, could, you could go up to like as many as you like, honestly. But let, let's stick it to six for now because that's the usual recommended we can turn on blur reflections right that could be cool uh, and also dynamic ripples is nice uh, 50 is a bit high though so set it to like 12 right so we what we're doing in this these, these are all options but just like a recommended settings draw distance up to six we can blur reflections in the water and turn on dynamic ripples and set it to 12. Now, there's a lot of other stuff you can do in this. There's this dynamic lighting's coefficient, but we're not going to mess with that right now. Uh, you, you could look into that, but it, that's a complicated thing for a first time thing. But what you can do is on the in-game, you can just for now click on allow yes to all load errors, right? In case there's an error of something gone wrong, instead of having to click yes on like 100 errors, Sometimes you just want a yes to all button. So you want to do that, right? Just turn that on. 
And that's that's good. That's good. Like you could mess. Like, you can actually do like weather settings if you really want. But no, let's not mess with any of that. Let's just close it, right? We're going to close the Morrowind graphics extender. Bam. Now, we are pretty much done. But in terms of lighting, I just want to guide you through one more step. Now, this is an INI tweak, which is a um, configuration setting. So in the Morrowind install directory, in the Morrowind install directory, there's going to be a Morrowind file, right? Don't get confused. Not the one with this icon. You see this Morrowind here? It's not that. That says application. You want this Morrowind with a white piece of paper and a gear, and it's a configuration setting. This you can open, right? Open with Notepad. And it's got basically the settings of the game, right? This Notepad has settings in the game. And it's got a lot of stuff. Technically, you could go ahead and tweak all sorts of things in here. But we're just going to tweak a couple things. So if you control F to find things, right? Control F, you can just look for attenuation. A-T-T-E-N-U-A-T-I-O-N. Right? Attenuation. Actually, you could probably just search for... Yeah, a 10. And you'll find light attenuation. Okay, we'll close that. And here there's just a few numbers here that personally I like to tweak. So, I got my notes here. So, the first one is uh, linear... Okay, linear radius malt. We're just going to set that to 2. Make sure use quadratic is 1. Yep, okay. Quadratic value. I'm going to put 4 right and the quadratic radius malt we're going to put to 1.7 now these settings here you know th th there's a lot of preferences some people tweak it one way or another they tweak it all sorts of ways but basically we did the radius malt to 2 the quadratic value to 4 and quadratic radius malt to 1.7 right three number changes that's it three number changes and then make sure you Control S, or you just go to File, Save. Make sure the file saved. And then close the notepad. Good. Good. So, now we're ready to run the game. Remember, Morrowind Launcher. If you're creating any shortcuts or anything, base it on this. Don't run these things here. I I've experienced some issues running direct like that. Morrowind Launcher. Also, that the launcher brings up this window, which is very important, right? This window, because we need to open data files and make sure everything we need is turned on, which currently Robert's bodies is not on. So let's turn that on because we already turned on the rebirth stuff and the grass rebirth. Do not turn on the grass in this data files folder. Do not. Our distant lands generator has already generated the land. The, the grass, rather. So we do not need this. Do not turn this on. Leave it alone. Leave it. So we just turned on Robert's bodies and all the Morrowind rebirth stuff here. And that should be good. We're going to press OK. And play. And hope nothing goes wrong. Sometimes things just go wrong. Something breaks. All sorts of things. Right? Oh. Something's gone wrong. <laughs> uh, okay, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. I think I forgot one thing. I think I forgot one thing. Let me just check. No, no, it's okay. It's all okay. It's fine. There's just a bit of lag. Oh, sometimes it's stressful modding these games. Let's click on new and see what happens. First, there's the cinematic play. Yes. Let's skip the cinematic. Let's make sure everything's running and working. Things might load in a little slower. Stand up. There you go. You were dreaming. What's your name? There's Jube with his new hot bod. <laughs> now, th there's a lot of people who say like, oh, the heads don't perfectly match the bodies. Th this is an issue um, with more mod, like modern mods. Like a lot of people like Robert's bods, but he hasn't done the heads yet or there's there's some issues sometimes, but it's okay. Most of the time, people are wearing clothes. Anyway, 
I am Gamer Zack. Well, not even last night's storm could wake you. I heard them say we've reached Morrowind. I'm sure they'll let us go. Okay. Quiet. Here comes the guard. This is where you get off. Come with me. All right. So everything seems to be working and looking okay. We've got our lights and everything. So this ship might be a little dark, but we'll do some lighting adjustments soon once we're on the outside. Sometimes it's good to just make sure everything triggers. Let's see if her voice line triggers. The sooner you leave, the sooner we can move on. Looks good. Get yourself up on deck and let's keep this as civil as possible. Looks good. And now let's have a look at the new modded Morrowind. And it's working. <laughs> it's working. Ah. Uh, so all the textures are the AI upscaled textures. The water looks great. The grass is in. Everything looks good. Yes. Yes. So obviously you can mod things even further than this, but I think this is good. This is where they want you. Head down to the dock and I'll show you to the census office. Okay, good. You finally arrived, but our records don't show from where. All right, so I'm just going to go default here. Uh, but the heads and hairs that we've modded in should show up here. Yep, okay, that's good. Let's go with that. Great. I'm sure you'll fit right in. Follow me up to the office and they'll finish your release. Nice, nice. Now, when you're testing mods, it's always good to... Head on in. Get into the game. Get into the game to make sure it's really working. Because some things can go wrong here, right? Ah, uh, yes. We've been expecting you. Uh, you'll have to be recorded before you're officially released. There are a few ways we can do this, and the choice is yours. Okay, I'm just going to give him the info, and that's fine. Very good. The letter that preceded you mentioned you were born under a certain sign. And what would that be? And for now, I'm just going to pick the steed. By the way, there's one thing in game that I would do once we're out of here that I think you should do. Now, before I stamp these papers, make sure this information is correct. Yes, that's fine. Good, good. Show your papers to the captain when you exit to get your release fee. Look at these new HD textures. Now... Lighting and stuff is not the most dramatic, right? So, under options, you'd want to tweak this gamma correction, right? Personally, I'd like it a lot lower, right? Somewhere around here, I think. So the lighting pops a little bit more. Now, there are lighting mods and everything, but just drop the gamma. It helps make things look a bit nicer. It might be a bit too dark on your screen. It really depends on your monitor. So... If your monitor's slightly dark, I'm just going to boost this up a little bit for your benefit, but tweaking the gamma setting... Continue through to the next building and talk to Salus Gravius. ...does help a lot in terms of the atmosphere. So let's get out of this building. All right, don't worry. We dropped the gamma a bit. It's still nice and bright outside. Take that ring. Good. And then we get out of this we gotta talk to Celis Gravius about Morrowind and duties and then goodbye now let's get out so here we are out in Sedanin the new modded Morrowind in a very simple thing now one thing that I I would change is let me find a spot to really show this off okay here's some shadows on the ground I think they're moving too fast so I'm going to press the tilde key, the squiggly line on the left of one or above tab, typically. And I want to type in a command, const, command line, which changes how fast time passes, right? And I'm going to put set space time scale space two space six. Set time scale to six. Enter. And now, you see these shadows moving a lot slower, right? And when you're walking around, now you won't notice them as much, right? They're not zooming by. Timescale can be used for all sorts of things, right? If you press the up arrow key, you resume the code. 
If you put 6,000... Time flies. <laughs> but it's good. We're going to nighttime. There we go. Nice modded. Okay, this is nighttime. Let's set it back to 6. It's another way to wait with a bit of drama. But okay, set time scale 6. Here all the torches come out. And this is where I like to set my gamma settings, right? Uh, so we can see the new <clears throat> town with the lights, right? It's pretty dark. Yeah. It's pretty dark. But this is where I like to go into the options menu and adjust my gamma to where it wants to be. Like, this is way too dark. This is way too bright. Oh, th this is not reflecting in the recording, right? This is not reflecting in the recording, I think, right? If I do this... Yeah, it's actually not showing up on the recording. It's a weird thing, right? I've made it way too bright. Just realize, I don't think it's showing in the recording. So adjust this to your liking, right? Because you might be seeing it how you might, like, okay, it's fine, okay. Weird, weird program stuff. This isn't actually reflecting in the recording, I think, for you guys. So I'm just going to drop the gamma for me so it looks like nice dark nights, right? The skies are dark. The lights are popping a little bit, but it's a little hard to see because it is nice, except for him. He's right there, right? And that that's it, right? You get into the game after all the modding, set the time scale to six, adjust the gamma to your liking, preferably at nighttime, so you can adjust how how dark things are at night. Like this, this looks very ominous to me. It's very dark. There's no lights out there, right? I don't know if I can. Run! Run you little thief. Come back! <laughs> I'm stealing a light. I'm stealing a light. So that I can equip a lantern. There we go. There's, there's a little light on me. Can I travel? Can I travel? Let's skedaddle. <laughs> Still a lamp off Where the wall. Where would you like to go? Okay, so you see, I have like a little bit of a light now. Which helps light things up when I walk right up to things. But adjust the gamut to you how you like. This is Balmora. The new modded HD thing. Looks good. Right? I'm going to step out of the town here. And show you just one last thing which you might like. Uh, let's actually wait. You know, let, let's wait in the dramatic way. Set time scale 6000 until it's daytime. Uh, the stars pass. That's good. Sort of morning time. Now. One of the cool things I just want to show off is the water. You know, we did that ripple effect thing. The water does actually have ripples now. Look at that. That's nice. Good. And just a little note. The grass does actually shift as you walk through it. See that? Oh, there's a cliff racer right there. That's not good. But yeah, see, the grass does sort of move as you go through it, which is nice, right? A lot of the changes, like you saw that red tower in Sedanin, that's part of the new uh, rebirth. We've got these wooden gates that lock at night. Everything looks the nice and cool. Approaches. There's some new buildings and stuff. But there we go. That's... That's Morrowind. That's Morrowind. It's all modded, ready to go. Lovely sunlight and everything. And it's good, right? That's nice. There we go. Morrowind's done. 